So we're sitting here one year after a decision that impacted millions of Americans across the country. And in your briefing, just after the Dobbs decision was handed down, you said, quote, be aware of this. The Republicans are plotting a nationwide abortion ban. They cannot be allowed to have a majority in Congress to do that. Now, we've seen the response from the American public since then, but how concerned are you if Republicans regain the Senate, the White House, that they would push through an abortion ban? Well, I feel quite certain that they would. I, uh, I have to make sure that they don't win the House, uh, and that I'll work with our leader, Hakeem Jeffries, to make sure that doesn't happen. And I feel that it's definitely within grasp. Everybody said we were going to lose 30, 40 seats mm -hmm. last time we lost five. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, you had the wrong message. They were saying to me, you're going to owe an apology to the members because Dobbs is in the rearview mirror. But it wasn't. It was up front, uh, right up in front mm -hmm. for uh, women in our country. We lost five, not 30 or 40. But uh, we didn't want to lose those five. So we'll get them back. Now, there's a lot of language being thrown out there by Republicans running for president about their plans on abortion. And I think it's so important for people to understand what they're actually saying. So Governor Ron DeSantis signed into law in the dark of night, uh, as we all saw, or we didn't see, uh, an abor a six-week abortion ban. Is that essentially a ban on abortion, given most women don't know that they're pregnant at that point in time? Well, it is. I don't think we should get involved in dates and all of this. But if you take total ban restrictions of that kind and the rest, many states in our country uh, will have a, a very unhealthy situation for women. In addition to which, the members here, uh, only a handful of them voted to enable women to travel mm -hmm. to seek reproductive health care. So it, this is it's a, it's a disrespect for women. It's a right of privacy. It is a precedent of the court. And what the court did one year ago was something that reversed what has been happening in our country. Since the beginning of our country, our founders founded on freedom and democracy. Our founding document, of course, the Declaration was very clear mm -hmm. in that regard. But the Constitution was not in terms of equality and the rest. But in their wisdom, they made it amendable, starting with the Bill of Rights, African-American men getting the right to vote later than women getting the right to vote, one thing and another. Ro uh, Roe v. Wade, and then mm. marriage equality, mm -hmm. and, and then a reversal. The first, our country has always been about expanding mm -hmm. freedom until now. This court, ignoring its own precedent and the right of privacy in the Constitution. So we have to reverse that, and Congress has the right to do that mm -hmm. one way or another. And people have to know what is at stake in the election? Now, one of the impacts has been, of course, that it's been let, sent back, left to the states. And candidates like former Governor Christie have said, you don't have to worry about abortion if I'm president because the states will decide. What is the danger of that exactly? Well, the danger of that is we have to have federal protection. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why somebody would say that because it is self-contradicting. Mm -hmm. The fact is we have to have a federal protection as Roe v. Wade was which was upheld uh, by the Supreme Court until one year ago, which was not only a setback for women and their reproductive health, it was a setback for freedom and democracy in our country. Now, President Biden, my former boss, has faced some criticism from some activists who, for not doing more from, in their, point of view, from their point of view or for not offering a clear plan uh, to protect abortion access. Are there things that you wish he was doing more or no, saying think, more at this point in time? I don't even know what their complaint is. We have no control over the Supreme Court of the United States except to continue to elect Democratic presidents who can appoint justices who believe in the Constitution. We're not asking their point of view on an issue. We just want to know what they do in terms of the Constitution and precedent. These justices said they believed in precedent of the court of course, they did not tell the truth. Donald Trump has taken credit for the Dobbs decision many times, yeah. uh, even recently posting, quote, I was able to kill Roe v. Wade, much to the shock of everyone. Is this something you think Democrats should be hanging around his neck more? Yeah, because first of all, it, it's an hypocrisy of the first order, but that, without going into his, shall we say, inconsistencies, to use a gentler word, yeah, that's what he's saying. 
And I think that that has clarity. And there are people in our country, and I respect their view on the issue of a woman's right to abortion. But these same people in the Congress, eight of them voted for women having the right to contraception. Mm -hmm. Eight. Mm. I think it was just three, maybe, or so, voted for women to be able to travel to mm -hmm. uh, uh, have access to reproductive health. So make no mistake, there's, there is clarity on their side on this issue. And it is uh, wrong, but it's red meat to their base. I want to talk about the Supreme Court, because this week ProPublica is out with a new report about Justice Alito failing to disclose gifts, including a luxury trip with a billionaire donor with business before the Supreme Court. This is after the reporting we've seen surrounding Justice Thomas and his wife, and you've been quite outspoken about mm -hmm. the fact that there's no ethics requirements, yeah. essentially, not a baseline of that. There's also a new Quinnipiac poll that shows public approval of the court has dropped to 30%, which is mm -hmm. shockingly low, yeah. uh, an all-time low. Do you, are you concerned the Supreme Court has lost its legitimacy? Well, I think they have the opportunity to write some ethics rules for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Chief Justice has said. We can do it ourselves. I see no action being taken there. But nonetheless, that's what they have said. But I give credit to Senator Whitehouse because with the majority in the Senate, he is able in his committee to point out what needs to be done to have integrity on the court integrity on the court. It's shameful how Thomas, as Justice Thomas and Justice Alito, have been so cavalier about their violations of what would be expected of a justice of the Supreme Court. Here we have a body chosen for life, never have to run for mm -hmm. office, uh, nominated, confirmed for life, with no accountability for their ethics behavior. 30% seems high. Do you think that there should be changes, reforms to the Supreme Court, term limits, uh, an expansion? Yeah. yeah. I don't know about the expansion. I mean, it's been over 150 years mm. since we've had an expansion of the court. Mm. It was in the time of Lincoln that it went up to nine. So the subject of whether that should happen is a, a discussion. And it's not, a say, a rallying cry, but it's a discussion. Uh, the president formed a commission. They did not recommend expansion of the court. That shouldn't be the end of it. But there certainly should be term limits. There certainly should be term limits. And if nothing else, there should be some ethical rules that would be followed. I had one justice tell me he thought the other justices were people of integrity, like a Clarence Thomas. I'm like, get out of here. Mm. I mean, you know better than anyone what the capacities and capabilities of Congress are. Are there other things that could be done to hold the court to a higher standard or put in place additional requirements with a Republican House? Well, I do think that, well, the Republican House, no. I mean, mm -hmm. no commitment to integrity. If they had any commitment to integrity, how could they support Donald Trump for president mm -hmm. of the United States? I mean, what could be more abusive of integrity and ethics uh, than Donald Trump? However, um, uh, the court has said that they wanted to create their own ethical standard. I think that's an indication that they don't have one that mm -hmm. is sufficient. And let's see what they could do. But I support uh, Senator Whitehouse and the work that he is doing, bringing stability to the conversation. This is not to enrage. It is to bring stability to the conversation. Because the court is, I mean, we talk about an independent judiciary throughout the world. It's one of the pillars of a democracy. Mm -hmm. And we want ours to be respected, even if we disagree with decisions. That's one thing, but we shouldn't have to worry about their ethics. We're sitting right here in the Capitol building, yeah. and over the last week we've seen the hearing with John Durham, Republicans trying to force a vote to impeach Biden, the vote to censure Congressman Adam uh, Schiff. You were pretty fired up on the House floor during that mm -hmm. vote or during the debate about, around the vote. Uh, you said Repu During that, you said Republicans have turned the House quote into a puppet show. You went on to say the puppeteer is Donald Trump. Should we anticipate, do you anticipate that Donald Trump is going to keep driving the agenda of the Republican-led House? So. It appears so, because the fact is, is that when we had this vote, was it a week ago, it lost the vote to censure Adam Schiff. Mm -hmm. The word is, and I don't know because I'm the last person to speak about what goes on among the Republicans, but the word is Donald Trump forces weighed in and now the vote changed because... 
They're protecting the um, unpatriotic, unscrupulous uh, behavior of Donald Trump. Now, John Boehner called you the best speaker, I think. <laughs> One of the best, maybe the best, I believe, uh, of the House that there has ever been. You are a defender of the institution of yeah. the House mm -hmm. uh, and an institution that has a lot of history. Yes. What are you thinking when you watch uh, the events of these past weeks about the behavior of some you see on the other side of the aisle? Well, let me just say that um, I respect that. But I've had my disagreements with the Republicans on issues, and that is a democracy. Mm -hmm. And since the beginning of our country, there's been a debate as to what the role of government is, what the role of the federal government is, and that's the dynamic that brings us here to agree, disagree on how we budget and how we allocate resources and how we, again, minister to the needs of the people. So we have different views. And that's exciting, and we like to win the debate, and we like to make a difference. For example, the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. giving millions, tens of millions of people access to health care. Take great pride in that. Not one Republican voted for that. So we have a difference of opinion. But that's on an issue. We don't have a difference of We've never had a difference of opinion on our patriotism, our love of the country, and our respect for the institution. Do you think that's changed? Started. I think it has definitely changed. I think it changed when they uh, uh, really were so um, disrespectful of Speaker Bain. I mean, mm -hmm. he just said, I'm out, uh, because they just were going to do this every week. If they didn't like whether he won or lost on any issue, they were going to vacate the chair. And I mean, the, the lack of respect for the Institute, you wonder why they would want to be here. So what, when you asked me what I was thinking during the, all that happened yesterday and before, I was so proud of our Democratic members. Mm -hmm. They know why they're here. They respect this institution. They respect the right of disagreement between the parties or even among ourselves on certain issues. That's what a democracy is about. That debate is dynamic and exciting. And we hope to win it. But if not, at least to respect that we participated. And for them, I see some of them standing up on the floor the way they did to just show respect for the institution. Why on earth would they be doing what they were doing yesterday, except for their disregard for the institution? But we cannot become them. Hmm. Is it, what we want to do is provide stability in what we do here. And that means vigorous disagreement on issues, but strong commitment to our Constitution. So stability for the institution, strength of our democracy, and again, just the uh, strength of our, the rights of people, for example. Might be way mm -hmm. to get back to that. Now, you're known for many, many things. One of them is being an excellent vote counter. Yeah. Do you think Kevin McCarthy will be speaker at the end of the year? But let me just say this. One thing I am is strategic. Mm -hmm. And when i strategic, you have to know what you're talking mm -hmm. about. I have no idea what goes on in their caucus. But I do know one thing, in January of 2025, Hakeem Jeffries will be Speaker of the House. So Donald Trump, as we know, was uh, just indicted and pleaded not guilty mm -hmm. to 37 federal counts involving the retention of classified documents, obstructing justice, and making false statements. What was your reaction when you read that indictment? Well, you know, I have 30 years of experience in intelligence. Longest serving. Longest serving. And uh, of the only leader that anybody can remember in recent or even near history that came to leadership with a national security credential, came from Ways and Means mm -hmm. or uh, Agriculture or Transportation. I came from an intelligence standpoint, as well as appropriations that related to our national security. So I had 30 years, and, and I know how important it is to protect these documents. If I were in my in the skiff, that's the room that you go in to get brief, and I just wrote down a few names or a few dates, I couldn't take my own piece of paper out of the room. With the names and dates on With it? With the names and dates. Mm -hmm. I'd have to submit it to the staff to be placed in a vault. I would have access to my information, but I could not take it with me. This is about protecting our national security. It's about protecting our sources and methods. 
And not only that, as allies. Mm -hmm. What is an ally? A person who is, helps you, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, we are jeopardizing not only our own security, but the security of other countries and their sources and methods. How do they trust us as an ally if we do that? So what uh, the former president is alleged to do, and he seems to have confessed to it, but nonetheless, he's innocent until proven guilty, is to say he did it and have some arrogance about it. And um, if that is the case, he seriously jeopardized our national security, if he did that. And secondly, he is dishonoring our court system in the manner in which he is treating it. So our security and one of the pillars of our democracy, very casual about it all, sad to say. As you just alluded to, I mean, reading the itemized list of 31 documents mm -hmm. and the clearance levels as a, as a former mm -hmm. ranking member on the Intel Committee, yeah. Yeah. there were five eyes uh, uh, classifications there. There were some of the highest level yes. classifications. And knowing what you know about former President Donald Trump, we know he has an affection for dictators. Do you have concern, without us knowing at this point, of what he may have wanted to do with those documents? No, I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is that he seriously jeopardized our national security. And uh, the other piece of that in terms of him is he himself, when he was a candidate, talked about how important it was to protect our documents, our security documents. And as president, he made a very glowing statement about how important it was to protect the documents. And in even one speech, I think it was North Carolina, where he was speaking to the troops saying, you all have taken risks. We have to protect that. And many of see, people have to understand that we pray for our troops. We owe them so much, our veterans, their families, their caregivers. Our, our intelligence community is, takes risks for us all the time. And to jeopardize their lives, their families, the sources they may have interacted with is a, is a very dangerous thing, very irresponsible. And by his own public statements, before he was president and as president, he knew that. You have been incredibly outspoken. You were here on January 6th. You played a leading role on January 6th. Um, you've been a strong defender, of course, supporter of the work of the January 6th committee. Yeah, yeah. And this week, the Washington Post was out with a report detailing how senior leadership at DOJ resisted investigating Trump's role on January 6th yeah. for more than a year, according to the Post, quote, a wariness about appearing partisan, institutional caution, and clashes over how much evidence was sufficient to investigate the actions of Trump and those around him all contributed to the slow pace. Do you think that the Justice Department waited too long uh, in, in order to move forward with investigating Trump? I can't really speak to that because all I know about it is what you just mm -hmm. uh, described uh, that was in a public account. Uh, I do think that right now, my first question when I saw that article was, but right now they are proceeding. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, I understand the sensitivity to a, a president who has incited an insurrection. They were going to put a bullet in my head, hang the, the uh, vice president of the United States. Uh, they made an assault on our democracy, on our constitution, and the rest. And that, that has to be investigated, because you just can't do that. And, and you can't arrest people for doing it while ignoring the big fish who mm -hmm. instigated it, if, in fact, they have the uh, intent uh, to take the, the case to that point. Let me just say on that score... Mm -hmm. This is about overthrowing an election. Let's remember, let's get it back to where it was. Mm. This is the day that the Constitution, according to the Constitution, the Congress will accept the calculation of the Electoral College. And um, they wanted to interfere with that. That's why I said we must go back to that floor. We have to show the world that we are in charge. This is not a victory for them, them being them, and it is uh, that United States is there. And my motto is, I take it from the national anthem, the flag was still there. You frequently quote Benjamin Franklin's, a republic if you can keep it. Yeah. If Donald Trump wins re-election, do you think we can keep it? I never thought he would win the first time, so I hesitate to say there's no way he could win again. Mm. 
But here's a president who has been twice impeached, multi-times indicted. We don't know how many it'll be. Defeated once. I think he's very seriously damaged goods. Uh, so we have to do everything to make sure that a person so frivolous with our democracy, so jeopardizing of our national security, so disrespectful of our rule of law, would ever be a president of the United States once again. It breaks my heart that that office was tainted by somebody who didn't respect it. I do honestly believe, and I tried to respect the office he held and the fact that he held it, but I then learned that I respected the office he held more than he did. Thank you.